Hey folks, DIY Dan here. Today we're going to work on my Toro uh, Recycler 22 inch 2015 lawnmower. Uh, it's the 20333 model. So, the problem with my mower this time, if you refer to last time, which would be up, the card will be up here, uh, we changed the mower blade. Well, part of that's actually going to be used in our repair today because uh, when I would start the lawnmower, it would immediately go to like top RPMs, even if I engaged the blade, I thought the thing was going to take off. Uh, the blade was spinning so fast, couldn't figure out why. Did all sorts of adjustments with the governor and the, and the throttle arm, which we'll sh you'll see later on when we get started. Uh, I think it's going to be a damaged or broken auto governor, uh, which I've bought. And while I'm going to have the engine apart, which requires taking apart the whole engine, and removing the engine from the uh, mower deck. So we're going to have to do that and take the engine apart in order to get to that auto governor. And I'm, while I've got it apart, since it's going to be like that, I also bought some maintenance stuff, items, all of which I'll show you as we get to it uh, to replace. So uh, some of the tools you'll need are right here. Uh, you may need some or all these or none of these, uh, but for my particular application, for my particular lawnmower, these are the tools I'm going to need and I'm going to use. So, let's get started. Okay, so this is going to be a detailed repair. Uh, I'm going to do from the way I do it. Again, I am not a small engine mechanic. Uh, I'm just a DIY guy here, but... Uh, uh, I'm confident in what I'm doing here, but again, if you're not confident or anything, please consult a professional small engine mechanic or lawnmower repair guy. But uh, this is just a guide. It's not all inclusive. So, first thing we need to do is we need to take our pull start out of here, and it's just a loop. It curves around, so it's just a matter. Oh, that reminds me, cameraman. I would show you the problem. Uh, but I've already drained all the oil out of the engine and I'm not starting it with no oil in it. Uh, that's a good thing to do and that's actually should be your first step is to drain the oil out of the engine because we're going to be removing the engine from the mower deck and you don't want to spill it all over the place. Anyway, back to this. So you just pull it and it just comes through that like there. Boom. Down to there. Next thing we need to do is remove the cover. There's two Phillips head screws in there. Right, and then that comes off. And we just work the handle through the hole there. And then I use this as a screw catch so I don't lose them. <laughs> the last thing you want to do is lose them. The next step is going to be to, as you can see, I've already got the fuel line pinched off because I'm not going to empty out the fuel tank and I'll show you how I'm going to deal with that in a minute, but this will keep uh, the fuel from spilling. So next we're going to remove this bolt. Uh, to this is the air filter, and it's going to be a. a let's see if I can find the size on here. Nine sixteenths uh, size bolt. I've also found that uh, if you don't want to do it with, the, with this, you can. That's the air filter and the housing. Again, you can also use this as a bolt catcher uh, too, which I'm, I am going to use. The next thing, same size bolts here. We're going to take this off. This will uh, expose the carburetor. Well, it's really on there. There we go. You want to drain the fuel off here, you out of there, you can, but I'm not. So this just pulls right off. There's a tube here, just pulls right out. There you go. This is your carburetor. Now, if you've had fuel in here and you've pinched off the line or you drain this, 
he's still going to be fuel here in his bowl. You can remove this bowl and drain the fuel, or actually just move, removing the screw, which is under here, we'll do that. Um, or it'll, it might leak out here, but you'll be fine with that. Next, my flyers. And one trick I wanted to show y'all is these screws are 9 16 but they're also, if you have a screwdriver like this, it fits perfectly in there. So there's a little tip for you, a DIY Dan tip. Okay, kind of get the clamp and pull it down. And then you should just twist it. The line twists easy, which means you can pull it off. If it doesn't twist, doesn't move, you need to make sure you twist it. So even some fuel is going to leak out now, but that's okay. Next, we're going to remove this whole, this is all one piece. It's the fuel tank and also mounts to this. So again, it's also the 916 bolts. And there's three of them. Stubborn. All right, and they look like this. They've got a little shaft here to keep them from getting too tight and breaking the plastic because this is all just plastic. As you can see, this tilts right back, like that, and then you can, we're going to remove this bolt right here. And that is a 3 8 inch bolt. So I'll swap this out on my drill here. And then the whole gas tank comes off. And this is shafted also. Uh, you can either leave it with the gas tank or put it back in here, but I'm just going to move it off to the side of the gas tank. There you go. That way you don't have to empty the gas tank. Next is this metal cover, but first, actually before that, we have to remove this bolt that's holding the dipstick in, the oil dipstick. So that goes back to the uh, 9 16 I'll just use this. And it too is shafted like these three bolts were. What I do with this, because I don't want to get the oil reservoir contaminated, because as you can see, that's where the oil goes. I just turn it around this way and put it back in to keep dirt from getting inside. Now we need to remove one, two in front, and then there's three, four in the back. So we'll start with the front bolt. And now there is a difference between the front and back holes. These are the front bolts, and I'll leave them here for a minute. Throw you there. And as you can see, the rear bolts are shorter than the front bolts. So you want to make sure front, long, rear, short. Now this just lifts right off. It's got your whole rope assembly in there. And you put that to the side. So, uh, for illustration purposes, this is your uh, choke, your auto choke. This lever here, spring. This uh, arm is attached back here to the governor, auto governor, which is right here. This rod coming up is actually the auto governor. It goes down into the engine. Uh, and this is what controls your RPMs on your engine. It's automatic. Uh, and then, so what the problem is, is that this position right here on the carburetor is wide open, which means as soon as you start it, it's got maximum airflow, maximum fuel fit flow, and it runs. This normally would come and govern it. It would close it and do it automatically, but it's not working. So next, what we're going to do, I believe, that is everything on the top side. Oh, and I forgot one of the most important things. 
before you start any work on a lawnmower, you disconnect the uh, spark plug. I apologize. I'll put a note on that in the beginning of the video later. All right, so we're going to move over to the tip this over on its side because we have to get to the underneath bits. So I'm going to tip it this way. It doesn't matter which way you want to tip it, but I recommend doing it this way. And again, zero lawnmower. Now, because we're going to be taking the bolts out of the engine, I'm going to use this jack. Support the engine for when it comes time for us to take out the bolts. You could use blocks or jack stands if you have small enough jack stands. It doesn't matter what you want to use, you just want to put something up underneath here. But it supports the engine so it doesn't just fall off when you pull the bolt out. Alright, so now we're underneath. Uh, all this has to come out starting with the blade. Uh, if you have an impact like I do, it is a 14 millimeter socket, not a 5 eighths. And uh, you can take both these bolts off. If you don't have an uh, air ratchet or electric powered one, you're just going to have to either hold the blade, wear gloves to do that, or uh, put a block of wood there. Again, you can refer back to my how to change the Toro blade. Uh, video and it'll show you how to take this off but it's just a matter of taking off the bolts ah! Ah! now this whole assembly comes off if you want to keep it all together so you remember how it goes I just put it all in a pile right there so now I remember how it goes that's how I keep from forgetting next we gotta take this guard off it actually has bolts on the top side here. So camera is going to swing it out. This bolt right here by the drain wash and this bolt right here hold that guard on. So there again, they're the 3 8 inch bolts. So I'm just going to take them out. You can let that wire hang. Take those both out. And then there's just some plastic clips like right here. That boom, Bob's your uncle. Uh, one more note if you want to come back around the front here. You also need to disconnect this wire because uh, when we take the engine out off, the only thing that will be connecting it is this wire. It's these two tabs that get pulled up. And then you just got to remove that ground screw, which I believe is going to be. Maybe it's this size. Yeah, which is again the three. I think this is the three, the nine sixteenths. So, take that off. Let that hang, and then put the screw back in. That way, you don't have to worry about remembering as many screws as you can temporarily put back as you can. That'll keep you from forgetting where it goes later. Because there's going to be a lot of screws. A lot of... The easy part of this job is going to be taking the engine off. The hardest part is what we're working on right now is this blade pulley assembly and all that. So there we go. That's the end part. Alright. So this can get complicated. I would recommend taking a picture of this before you start. This big belt is the blade belt. When you push the handle down to engage the blade, this comes up like this, adds tension, turns the blade. When you release it, this brake hits, slows the blade down and stops it. This belt is your transmission belt that operates the wheels, the self-propelled part. Uh, some models have it up front. It's actually a little easier to get to. You have to take all these bolts out and this center bolt out and take this whole assembly off in order to get to this belt and this bracket. So that's what we're going to do. 
first thing we're going to do is disassemble this and we're going to start with the springs there's two springs under here we just need to get the one it's attached to this bracket we get all of my chair so i can actually get to it i'm going to try to come up under here and show it unless you can see it from there All right, there you go. Try not to let that slam. You can leave the other one on for now. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even take it off because this assembly will just hang. Next, do these bolts. They're also uh, 14 millimeter. But with this top one, you're gonna need a wrench to hold this bolt because it spins. And this is actually a 9 16th. So if you wanna use a 9 16th instead of 14 millimeter, they're both the same, so that's up to you, wherever, however you want to do that. Ah! And then this comes off. All right, you just let that hang. I like that better. So now, in order to get this bolt, this belt off, we have to remove this flywheel. So, which requires a center bolt. That center bolt is seven eighths. So, I've got my other half inch impact here for the seven eighths socket. Yes, I know they're silver. I know they're silver sockets, they're not impact sockets, but that's all I have. Sorry if that offends you. Shouldn't be on there that tight. And then this should pull right off. It might need a little, a little help here and there. It's actually two pieces. And at some point you might... There's actually, you could use like a, a puller needed. It should come off though. All right, folks, so I used a dead blow hammer. Hit it a few times. It was, uh, it was a little crooked. Uh, that loosened it up. And now it comes right off as a unit, one piece at a time. So you can see this is a bearing there. And if you want to keep these bolts in there, you can actually put on here so you don't lose them and this pulls off too and as you can see that's where the drive belt is uh, runs it's also got a keyway in there right there so when you put it back together you make sure you get it in the slot on the crankshaft which is this right here and again, if you want to put this together so that you don't forget how it goes, this is how you put it on. So it is like this. And we'll set that off to the side. And put this crankshaft bolt back on so we don't lose it. Alright. Now, the only thing left for this part is the three bolts that are holding the engine on. But we're going to hold off on that because we need to get this transmission belt off. Uh, only because I'm going to change it out. It's uh, worn out. It's three years old. I bought another one. This is just a maintenance thing. You don't have to. You could proceed with taking these bolts out and dealing with the inside of the engine from this point. But we're going to take care of this. That requires us to remove this guard right here, so, which is these bolts right here. And they are 3 8 inch bolts. Uh, you could take the wheels off if you wanted to, but I'm not. I'm just going to unscrew these and leave the wheels on. The less you do, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Could 
pre-do this before you turn it on its side. You like to do it that way. And then there's one here in the back where the bag connects. Oh, that one should reach for this, so one of them I can get more quickly. And then this comes out. Once again, Bob, you're up. Now, this transmission, there's a spring right here. It needs to come off. And that will allow you to tip it forward. Kind of a pain in the butt, but of course, for you guys, it came right out. So now you have to take this guard off. It requires a special uh, square bit that I don't have. So, what I actually did because I've taken this off before is I squared off the screw heads and made it into something I could undo with a socket. <laughs> Mine's Mine is actually an eight millimeter. Uh, if you uh, don't want to do that, you don't have to. Uh, if you have the appropriate tool, then use the appropriate tool. I always recommend that, but I don't. And at the time I did it, I, I needed it off. So I did that before I put them back on. But the good thing about that is you can make it whatever size you want. All right, so again, you only need to do this if you're going to replace this. If you've ever replaced it and your lawnmower's a few years old, I'd recommend it. So, now with that one, uh, we'll get to the replacing the other one when we get to that point during reassembly. So now comes the fun part, taking the engine out. Again, this is the easiest of everything we just did. Uh, these again are 14 millimeter or 9 16 if you want to use that. Uh, you can. I'm going to take out these two first. Actually, I'll take out these two and then we'll take the top one out, whichever one's on top for you. Uh, they're nice, long, thick bolts, so you're not going to be able to mistake them for any of the other bolts you've taken out. Now, even though it's braced with the uh, uh, jack, I'm still going to hold it steady. So even though I had the jack, it, it dropped down a little bit. So let's take this set aside, and now the engine is ours. And there you go. There's your engine. Now. Next, we're going to get into the engine. So let's go do that. All right, folks. So now we've got uh, this is the bottom. And remember, this is the crankshaft. So where we have to get to is in here. This is a separate, two separate pieces. This is the bottom that actually sits on the deck. And we take out all these bolts. Again, they're also 3 8 Toro was nice enough to keep everything. Most of the bolts the same size, so all these bolts have to come out. There is a gasket here that mounts. So you're going to have to get a replacement gasket. Just so you know, when you take this apart, you're going to need to replace the gasket. Because you're probably going to tear it. It's real thin. You'll see what I'm talking about when I take these bolts out. Oh, hold on tight. Oh, those bolts are really in there. All right, let's try that again. All right, we'll come back to that one. Maybe we need to break loose first. Let's do that. So, we uh, need socket somewhere. Yeah, dude.
hear that snap, that means they've broken loose. There you go. Since you started with this, my drill apparently not have enough torque, but I suppose if you're uh, you have an impact wrench, that'll Easier for you. Alright. Go. All these screws or fasteners are the same size. So it doesn't matter what order you put them in. Now you might need to encourage this to come apart, which is, that's a good thing. It the seal is good, so simply using a flathead screwdriver. Again, this is another reason why you're going to need to get a new gasket, because more than likely, you're probably going to damage the gasket. It's when you're trying to separate this. Look at that. You may not be that lucky. There we go. So there's the oil, the bottom of the oil pan. Uh, you want to inspect it, make sure there's no damage to the mating surface because this is a machine surface. And see, this is part of the gasket. So the gasket has ripped. That's why, so this is all got anything black here, that's all gasket. So this is the governor. And it just, it's not even attached. It's, I mean, fastened. It, it uh, turns by this, and centrifugal force will spread these apart. But you can see this is all bent and chowdered up. Right, that is definitely broke, broke in. Excuse me. So that's why we need a new one. So this is the cause of our problem. How this happened, I have no idea. One day I was just using it, and and I was having some idling trouble with it. There's no jets on that carburetor, so you can't adjust it. And next thing I know, it went crazy. So, there we go. Now this is the, the governor arm. And when we put the new one in, we'll adjust this. But you just want to inspect and make sure there's no other damage or anything. Because this is plastic also right here. This is your crankshaft. Your piston goes up in there. So we just need to get this gasket off. This old gasket off. Try to get it off in as much of one piece as you can. It's very brittle because it's old heat will destroy these things. Be very careful with metal uh, device. Uh, you don't want to scratch the, the mating surface. So I'm just using very little pressure. If you have a plastic tool that will take it off, that's even much more recommended. Okay, through the power of editing, I did my best. I got it as clean as I could. I also got the bottom side as clean as I could. Use some brake clean. Uh, now, the Auto Governor, it's a, there are no sponsors. The only uh, organization that sponsors this video is the DIY Dan Channel. So, uh, so Briggs and Stratton, not a sponsor. There's your part number. Uh, I got all these from jacksmallengines.com. Again, not a sponsor, but that's where I found the best prices, and they have a lot of uh, parts. This is how it's supposed to work. It's centrifugal force, so as it spins, it's uh, called an oil slinger also. So it'll spin, and that goes out, and that see that pin goes up? And that's what hits this governor level, lever that controls... So these mesh, these teeth mesh together, you want to line it up. This rod needs to be touching this cap. And I'll show you how to adjust that real quick. I don't need to adjust it because I adjusted it earlier. But you want to get this bolt right here is a 3 8 inch bolt. You loosen it. And then you want to, you'll move this. Okay, I'll just go ahead and do it just so you all see it. 
So you're gonna loosen this Turn it the right way. Just need to loosen it enough that you can move. So with your governor in place, you're gonna move this to right on top. And wherever that is, you're gonna need two hands. You're gonna make sure that this throttle is then wide open, which it is. So once this is lined up and that throttle is wide open, then you're then gonna tighten it. And that's where you need to set it. And this doesn't need to be super, super tight. There you go. Look, leak the little oil out, that's okay. So now it's just a matter of putting the gasket on. But first, I want to replace this gasket also, because uh, that's all a little leakage coming from the crankshaft. It's kind of like a rear main seal, I guess, on a full-size gas engine. Hopefully I'll be able to get this gasket out. Okay, so I took a little finesse off camera, uh, but basically what I did is you, you'd be able to see the lip in there. Just use this and hit around the edges until it popped out. Apologize for not showing that. So the new one, here's the part number. Should, I say should, just slide right in there. Just need a little coercing and you just want to get keep getting it in there until it bottoms out. A socket actually would be a good thing to use if you have a socket this size. To encourage it to go down. seated. Carefully don't damage the new one. should be good and this is a maintenance thing if yours isn't leaking you can skip this step there we go all right that's all the way seated perfect so now that we got that in there in place I'm gonna set this back on it make sure I have the orientation right you've also got these guide pins that will help you get it set in there properly Oh, sorry. See, y'all almost made me forget the gasket. The gasket. So, here's the part number for the gasket. Do that one. Now just be careful why they put it in a paper thing like this when you need to get into it. You don't want to have, you don't want to tear the gasket. But here they put it in this paper so that you can run the risk of tearing it. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't like this kind of packaging for this kind of thing because I've already broken the gas. But we're going to use it anyway. So, our 
hate paper gaskets. Alright. Well, this should not be broken. But, like I said, we're going to use it anyway because I don't have another one. So, this is just a matter of lining up the holes. And actually, if you want to use some oil residue to line your machined areas, you can kind of use that as an adhesive the gasket will stick to it a little bit. Hopefully it won't move. It's very irritating that that broke. And we might very well end up with a leak again. Um, that this would be a case where if you had Permatex or some other kind of liquid gasket this would be a good time to use that. Right, especially where it broke there. If you really wanted to use it, you can do it around all the bolt holes or at least the corners. Alright, let's give this a try. Unfortunately, this kind of stuff happens, so like I said, I'm going to use it, but it's up to you if you want to get another one. Uh, There. Alright, so <clears throat> when you're putting it on, you just want to get it so that the guide pins fit. Boom, it's just now snapped down. So there's this little tab should be showing on both sides. lined up and right, we can start putting our screws in and just look down the holes and make sure that the gasket's not interfering. I've done and none of them none of the holes are interfered with by the gasket. I don't know what the torque spec is. If you want to do this in a crisscross pattern, I'm just going down to the stop. Not even putting that much torque on them yet. hand again just do it in a crisscross pattern. You just need to probably not a lot of torque needed. Click. Just a little half turn. Be all you need. Want to look up the torque spec? You can. All right, that's it. That should be sealed. Our seal here should be good. That's not big enough. Okay. This one. All right. Perfect. All right. Now, the other maintenance thing I'm going to do is change this o ring right here for the dipstick tube. Again, if yours is okay, you don't necessarily need to do this. It's one of those changes of opportunity. It's still pretty flexible, but I'm going to go ahead and change it anyway. Since I have it apart, there's a part number for that, right there. I've got it for three years, it's reasonable. 
bowl to place this gasket or this washer. O ring. There we go. Let's make sure it doesn't roll and twist. Oh, I just, again, we're putting it in backwards. Oh, that gets so much better. Okay, and that's moves. Alright. Look at all my parts. Make sure. We're going to change the spark plug and add a spring. Uh, as you can see, this is my auto air flat lever. It's missing a spring. We're going to put that on once the engine is back on the, the uh, lawnmower. So let's take care of that. Okay, time to put it back on. Remember, spark plug faces from the front. Put it back down here on your jack stand. Not going to be perfect, and it's going to be a two-hand job. But you need to line it up. You'll know because it'll settle in. And if you have two people doing this, that would be helpful. But you can do it by yourself. Well, I'm not selling that very well right now, but. Got a screw in. So, come around this side, cameraman. Now that I've got a screw in, I'm going to run it down a little bit to help so I don't have to hold it. on the bolts, I don't have to hold it anymore. Alright, there you go. It's going to be a little more helpful. Okay, and uh, after sinking that one bolt, I did put thread locker on it. That's optional. You don't have to, but you want to put it at the bottom of the bolt, because that's where going to make the most contact with the engine. Felt like something was missing out of there. There we go. That's how it lines up. There we go. Alright. Nice and tight. Next. That will be our rear pulley back here. Again, it's got a keyway. I don't know if you can see that. Line that up with the groove here. I'm going to take off the bolt first. Before you do that, new belt. Here's is that the part number. I guess so. There's the part number. Make sure that's good over there. There we go. That should go all the way in. The next will be this one. I'm going to put just a little bit of grease in here for this bearing. Uh, again, you don't have to. Just wanted to put a little bit to help. Hope maybe it'll help a little bit. This is high temp grease. So. Pack it in there a little bit. Just to give it a little lubrication. Now these bolts, make sure they're already they're in there a little, see how they recess? You just want to make sure they're in there. There we go. That way it'll fit flush. Up against here. 
Alright, perfect. These should be loose, even when they're tightened down. Now you put your belt back over the top there. Now we're going to put this bolt back on. Again, we'll put a little bit more Loctite on that. dabble do you that's gonna push it all back again make sure these are loose if they're not loose something's wrong don't tighten it see and I already noticed before I even started that this is backwards You want it so that the brake is facing out like this. So it'll, it'll mount like that. So now we can tighten that down. The outer one spins because this is the blade and the brakes out. The inner one will spin when the engine is running. Alright, next we need to put this back together. So bolt there. It's the next shiny one so you don't forget. Again, you can do a little lock tight on that or not, it's up to you. My 916 French. So when the blades are, this pulls out, and then when the blades off, this goes down and stops it from spinning. Don't forget, we got to reconnect this spring down here. Okay, folks, I'm going to go ahead, time constraints, I'm going to put the rest of this back together. It's just the reverse of what we did when we took it apart. So all I have left to do is put the drive belt on, the cover, fully cover on, the blade back on, the plastic parts, parts, and then when we come back, we'll be at the top of the engine and put the rest of that stuff together. Uh, so I'll see you when that's done. Okay, we're back. Uh, the underneath is all put back together. Uh, and now we're just for another maintenance thing. Actually, first I put a uh, rock shield. They call it a shield trailing shield. There's the part number for that. Uh, mine's been gone for about six months. Took the opportunity to change it. Uh, now we're going to change the spark plug. So uh, this is. I apologize for not knowing the technical size of this. I have a big one and a small one. This is a big one. It's going to be used to change the spark plug, so really you should just have to, it shouldn't take much of a turn. There you go. It's kind of old. We'll get it in the sunlight. It's not in bad condition, but again, since we're here doing maintenance, I figured I'd change it. Here's the new one. Again, not a sponsor. So the old one was a champion, not a sponsor either. And we'll just put that right back in there. We started by hand. Make sure we don't cross thread it. This actually, can, this you just you just want a, enough torque to do the crush washer. I think. 
Boom, that's it. Easy as pot. The only other thing we're gonna show you is this spring right here. It's a spring that goes to the auto uh, air, air vane. Or, uh, and it's this little spring right here. It's the part number. The old one, I had lost it, and ironically, when setting up for this video, found it. But it's all worn out, so we're just gonna replace it too. We're replacing parts. Again, it's one of those replacement parts of opportunity. So this is pretty simple. It's a little vent right there. Just click one side to that. And then there's a little hook right here. And that's it. It hooks right there. And then this moves and adjusts your air intake. Alright, everything else is good. Uh, don't forget, while you're here, plug your wire back in, I do it up underneath the spark plug, and then I'm just going to reattach it back here. This the small one right here. And we can pull that one all the way down, so it should, should be easy enough to get out. your ground. You don't put this back, your lawnmower is not going to start. There we go. And next, put your, your cover back on. This is a magnet, so be frightened if this cover gets pulled onto it like you're trying to put it down on there. Not frightened, but confused, I guess would be the more accurate uh, statement. Alright, here we Remember which short ones go in front or back. Short ones go in the back. Test you know, hopefully you pass. on the side of the carburetor. Let's seat it all the way. I'm going to use my pliers. Right there, that'll work. Let's put the clamp back on. And then try to put it right where it was. Call witness marks. There we go. Release the tool. You have an older fuel line, you probably don't want to clamp it off like that. You can use a spark plug or something that'll fit in there to plug that line, but this line's in pretty good condition. Next, let's put on our, here it is. This, make sure this part goes right here in this vent tube. And it's just these bolts again. Same size, three eighths. And the air filter, the air cover. This is a good time to change the air filter, but I just changed it, even though it doesn't look like it. Yeah, what? 
cover on. Remember your two screws are in here. Don't forget to put your pull string through the hole first. Otherwise it's going to be hard to start. Plastic and it's flat plastic. So look out, runaway right tool. You don't have to torque this down too much. This is just really a beauty cover more than anything. Alright, last thing I need to do pull your cable far enough. You can just pull through that thing again. There you go, we're all done. So thanks for watching, I appreciate it, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them down in the bottom, please, constructive criticism is always welcome, and I'm not a mechanic, nor am I a small engine mechanic, so uh, this wasn't perfect, but for a DIYer, I think it went pretty well, so I appreciate every single one of you for watching, and hit the like, hit the subscribe, and I appreciate each one of you. See you next time on the DIY Dan channel. All right, folks. As you can see, it's running again. Sounds good. Uh, I did forget to mention, so don't forget to put oil back in it. This took about a quart. Well, not a quart. Uh, one whole bottle of uh, W30 uh, oil. And uh, now it's running good. It was not easy to get it started. Probably took me about 15 minutes. It's still kind of blowing stuff off, but uh, a lot of cloud of smoke. You just got to let it run, burn off all that cleaner you put in there, and uh, let it, the smoke's going to be okay. Because like I said, you had the whole engine apart, and there's just oil and stuff in there. But it sounds good now. It's running exactly the way it's supposed to. Blade engages. Do this with one hand here. So we know we put that together right. And it propels all by itself. So we put that together right. So once again, uh, be patient with it. Like I said, that probably took me a good 10 minutes of solid pulling and everything. Uh, I took out the uh, fuel filter. It used to be a fuel filter there. I added that uh, from a previous lawnmower I had. It's only been on for a little while and it was kind of choking off the fuel, so I took it off. But there you go, folks. So, once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Don't forget to put oil in the engine before it's done, okay? We'll see you next time on the DIY Dan channel.